Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of Glenzenlos Your Dance Podcast. This episode specifically is sponsored by Sister Dancewear, so we currently have a collaboration going on. If you use our code PODCAST10, you get 10% off of your whole purchase. So yeah, make sure to go use that. It's valid for whole August. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Dancewear is a female founded brand from Germany and offers aesthetic and functional dancewear created by a dancer for dancers. And guys, let me tell you, it's fucking comfortable. I'm actually wearing it right now. So um, as far as you can see, eh... <laughs> Yeah, I have amazing sets so yeah I use it for different styles I mainly use it for heels chairs and I love to wear them for pilates so um yeah make sure to go check it out also make sure to hit the subscribe button that is currently the best way to support this little project to support me to give us a five star, solo star recommendation if you feel like it yeah give us a thumbs up however um you can support us and yeah make sure to follow us on instagram to not miss out on any new episode yeah, now let's get to the episode. I'm here with Maya today. Thank you so much for making time. I'm so excited to do this with you. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I would say I introduced you pretty quick. You're an international dancer, teacher, traveling the world, living the dream, <laughs> if you can put it like that. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, to put it short. <laughs> basically, to put it in short, that's what I do. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to start talking about that? Because I know we agreed on the topic of, you know, talking about it is that dream that a lot of people dream about, traveling the world, dancing, working as a dancer, generally making that work. How are you feeling about it? How is life? You're currently in Miami, right? I am currently in Miami, yeah. Yes. Doing the same, just traveling and working. I'm here. Um, To talk about that, I mean... I started traveling when I was really, really young. I mean, I always loved to travel. I always, I always loved to dance and I always loved to travel since I was like a baby. Since I was like 10 years old, nine years old, I was like, I just want to travel and I want to dance. That's the only two things I want to do in my life. So I feel like since a young age, I knew that that's what I want to do. And I didn't actually think about exactly how I'm going to do it or exactly what's going to be the way that I will do it. But I knew that I'm going to come somehow do the two. And then I feel like, yeah, just life kind of brought it my way. I just, every like, I started traveling and traveling just for, like, short times when I was younger, when I was, like, 16, when I was, like, 17. And then I got to here. And I'm just, that's all I do for the, five, five, like, last five years of my life, basically. <laughs> Since I'm 18, I'm just, I'm going home every, like, few months. I visit for, like, two weeks, maybe three weeks, sometimes even a few days. And then I travel again for like a few months. And then I come back for like a few days and then I travel for a few months. That sounds so amazing. I just saw on your Instagram, your plans for the summer where you're going to teach. And I was like, she's going to be going back and front between two continents like four times. Listen, no, listen. Like that is the like from all the times that I traveled and I love doing it and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so happy this summer is gonna be amazing but the way that I cross the world this summer is wild actually it's, it's like insane. you're gonna be so jet lagged like in which time so are you gonna live <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna be jet lagged I don't think I'm gonna have the time to even feel the jet lag because I only arrive I have two days and then I leave so I'm just gonna be no time zone <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally no time zone no, I'm crossing, like, I'm going from, like, the USA is okay, like, South America, and then back to Europe, and then back to South America, and then back to Europe, and then back to Europe. I saw, I saw, that's so insane. Okay, I need to ask, like, yeah. basically, job-wise, how do you do it? Not talking about how you started, because I'm going to get to that point as well, probably, mm -hmm. but, okay, do you simply go somewhere? Okay, I mean, like, this thing we talk now about, that is planned already for your summer, I know. But like yeah. now you're now in Miami. Did you go to Miami because you got booked for a job in Miami or did you go to Miami and then search for job opportunities? How do you do it normally? Um, well, when I come to the States, usually I only come here um, to train. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the main goal when I have when I come here. Obviously, since like to work here, you need the work visa. To work here, you need to like go a lot of things like immigration wise. So when I come here, I come to train. So I think that's the main cause where, like, when I came here now, and also, like, I'm trying to, like, get my my visa, my work visa now. So it's, like, everything combines together. I'm trying to see if this is a place I want to stay in, if this is a place I want to settle in. But most of the time, yeah, I'm, like, okay. scary, scared. I'm terrified. I'm looking for a place to stay. That's mm -hmm. scary. I cannot decide where I want to live. 
um, <laughs> but I like terrified. I think most of the times when I when I travel, um, well, at least in the beginning, obviously I would just travel to a country since no one knew me. I used to travel, not even like with the intention of teaching or working. I would travel because I loved to travel. I would travel because I loved to dance. So I would just travel and follow like a friend of a friend. Like if I knew a friend from Mexico, if I knew a friend from, from Peru, if I had a friend from, I would just travel because I love to do it. And I would go there with the intention of learning, of exploring, of seeing the country, of taking in. I would never be like, I'm going there because I want to work. Mm -hmm. It was always with like the pure, like, I just want to learn and I want to experience and I want to dance and I would take classes. And I think slowly, like the more I travel, the more people I know, the more people I know, my exposure got bigger. Instagram is a huge part of it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like once this grew and I started knowing like people all over and I started having more followers. So people started seeing me in all of these countries. And I think in the place I am now, obviously like, they're calling me mm -hmm. to work in A, B, and C. Like, yeah, so yeah, usually I travel, you. yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I used to travel. I used to go there, like, by myself. I would pay for everything. I would go there because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then and then I would just teach classes on the way. Because if I'm already there and someone offers me to teach, of course, I would take the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But it was not like, but now I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't really do that. I would still love to travel. I still do that, but it's like, I mean, Usually. you still come around a lot, so, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The dynamic yeah. changed a little. Now people bring you to places and early Yeah, on. exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So that the... is still, like, yeah. And every time people do that, I feel like it's pretty crazy to me. In the first time that it used to happen to me, that someone will come to me like, we want to bring you. I'll be like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You, you want to pay like for everything? Yes, for me to come there and see. I remember the first times we were crazy and I feel like I'm still very grateful every time it happens. But now it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, it happen It happens much more, thankfully. Like, I'm mm -hmm. happy. I'm, I love doing that. I love my job. I love my job. That's the, yeah, that's that the sentence. <laughs> that's the sentence. That's the sentence, I, that's the sentence that? I would say about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There were two points I wanted to, to um, bring up a little bit more in detail, I guess. So, how did you start financially? Because you said you were just, you know, starting to travel, paying everything yourself. I think, you know, like maybe for a lot of people, I mean, also like for me, that sounds like, okay, you need to save a lot, a lot of money because, you know, you have your whole life here. You have your flat, you have your apartment, you have your costs that you need to pay each month, you know. It's not that easy for people to just say, okay, I go now. How did you, I don't know, did somebody support you? Did you save a lot of money? How did you do it? Um, I think it was a combination of all the things together. I mean, obviously, when I, when I was young, when I was young, young, when I, my first time traveling to them, like, how old when were I was you? Third, like when I was like 13, 12. Like, okay. Wait, but you yeah. went alone already when you were 12? I think the first time I traveled alone was when I was 14. I used okay, to yeah, travel like with too. yeah. Yeah, I used, I used to travel like when I was like 13 ish, I used to travel like with my studio, with my crew. Okay. with like for competitions and things mm -hmm. like that and then I started traveling for myself when I was like 14. Okay. I remember I traveled. So I think obviously in that time of my life um I, my my parents were like my biggest supporters always always since I started until today. They are like my biggest supporters so I'm very grateful that in the beginning of my way they were there to support in whatever I needed. It was like you want to travel during school travel. You need us to like just go follow your dream, reach your goals, do whatever you need to like mm -hmm. to get there. But I think because I had that so much motivation from there, I got to a point really early in my life when I was like, I don't want to ask them for that. This is my dream. These are my goals. Yeah, and I remember I when I was, that. I'm like, I don't like, even if they would like love to help me or not, it's like, I want to, it's my, it's my thing. It's mine. It's like, I'm not supposed to be. So when I was 15, I started waitressing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, I have to, I have to, I have a lot of, I have a lot of goals to reach. I need money. So I started waitressing. I remember I worked in that and I used to like save all year. I used to save all my money, save all my money, save all my money. And then in the summer to travel, most of the times I would travel to LA to like train. Mm -hmm. So like this for like a few years of my life, like three, four years, I would save all year, travel in the summer, save all year, travel in the summer, so like this every time. But you were pretty young, um, like, you know, going to LA, being that young, like that's not that common as well. No, 
no yeah. not at all but it was like it was the thing is i think as a kid i don't know what 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 what, what I don't know what happened, but it was like, it was very clear for me. It was never like, oh, I don't know where to go. Or it was like, I want to go to LA. Like, I know the best teachers. I know the best trainings there. I want to go to LA. Like a 14 years old was telling her mom, I'm going to LA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, follow your dreams. Like, if that's what you want, go to LA. I love that. But yeah, yeah. But I was very like, this is what I want. So I remember when I was 15, I used to save weight or things. And then... I think because my process like traveling the world started young I didn't have the worries of like mm. apart apartment paying for like cars because like, I didn't have any how do you say that in like belong I didn't have any property okay. I didn't have any property to worry about in Israel I didn't have a steady job I didn't have like some a job that I had to quit I didn't have a car that I had to sell I didn't have a house that I had to, I was just me like 16 yeah. years old so I would just work to pay for that. And I remember, um, and then when I, like when I was around 17, 18, this is where I started like teaching. So I used to waitress and teach same time, but it was the same process, saving, traveling, saving, traveling, saving, traveling. And then when I really like, like when I traveled, started traveling for long periods of time, and then I would start teaching over there. So then now, like now I travel for work. Now I travel and I earn money on the way. So I don't have like, so I just financially right now that's that's I think how I do it like because everything I do goes around evolves around work and if for example like I'm here to the states for like training I have all the months before that all I did was traveling and working and after this all I do is travel and work so it's so everything balances itself and back home I have nothing I I also I only go there every few months for like a week so I'm like, I go, I visit my family, but I don't have an apartment to pay. I don't have a car. I don't have my life or like, I live out of a suitcase basically for the past okay. five years. Do you have two suitcases? Do you have one suitcase? Cause like you need to, like you have need to have everything. There. Yo, <laughs> and you'd be surprised the amount of people that ask me that. Yeah. You don't know the amount of people that <laughs> ask me that. I was like, are you really interested in the amount of people? <laughs> like, it's, such a, it's such a random, simple question. I know, but like for me. But I get that yeah because like you know i I'm, get that i'm gonna be like three months in latin america in summer okay and i'm already thinking about okay i need to pack jackets i need to pack a bikini i need to like i'm gonna be in all climate zones like what am i gonna pack it's only three months you know so i'm like i don't know like i'm just packing for three months but you're living out of this uk i'm gonna come back and i have all of my stuff here you know so i'm like i don't know yeah yo you don't even know. That's one of the hardest parts of all of these things. No, because when I travel for a long time, or I think most of them, when I go out of the country, I travel to, I have like three countries that I know that I'm going to visit. And from there, it's like the uh-huh. universe. So like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go back home. I don't know if I'm going to get like other offers on the way. So I never know where I'm going to travel and what the weather is going to be mm-hmm. and what. So... I think I, I, I just balance it. I do have a lot of, I have a lot of clothes and most like I, I do leave them in my parents' house back home. Like I don't take all my things with me. It's okay. impossible. But I have, most of the time I travel with one big suitcase and one carry-on. Okay. But what happens, I swear, 99.9% of the times I travel with one suitcase and a carry-on and then I travel and I go along the way and then instead of traveling for one month I travel for five and then instead of being in the summer I'm being in minus 20 degrees so it's like and then and then you just you just buy things along the way and then from one suitcase you're like I owe you have to pay overweight and then from overweight you're like I don't even have space anymore so you buy another suitcase so I feel like every time I leave Israel or I leave my home base I live with one big suitcase and a carry-on and I come back with two big suitcases and then I carry on. And then, <laughs> and then like this, every time I travel, like yeah. I go back and forth. And my mom is always telling me like, you should really learn how to travel light at this point. Like you just travel all the time. You cannot be traveling with three suitcases every time. And I'm like, no, nah, it's fine. <laughs> I, I wish I could, mom. I wish I could. But there's no way I'm leaving this here. Like there's no way. Yeah. Every, every time, every time. No, like, but my mind is every time. <laughs> my mind is the same, you know, because also my parents would tell me, "Oh, you know, everything you forget here, you know, just just buy it over there." And I'm like, "Okay, I'm just gonna pack half of my suitcase, and you know, everything I need, I'm gonna buy there." And I already know I'm gonna. 
come back like we're gonna fill two kids i'm like no i don't know that's for it. sure but for sure you're gonna buy things there it's just what happens it's of not course. even like i'm going and it's not like i'm going on shopping sprees i'm not like i'm gonna go shopping and i buy fire vans it's just like okay i'm here now i'm here in miami now and it's 30 something degrees it's hot it's it's boiling hot like i'm here in the sun all day Mm -hmm. But two weeks ago, I was in New York, and in New York, it's one degree. Yeah. So it's like okay, it's like, and from here, for example, if I'm going back to New York, I'm like, I need, I need winter clothes. So you buy a jacket, you buy, you buy a shirt, you buy like things, you buy like thermal clothes. You have to buy things. It's like you have to. You, you cannot pack everything with you, especially if you're traveling for three months for different countries with different weathers. Yeah. You cannot. Ah, you cannot. You cannot. Impossible, I swear. Okay, another organizational question. Are you living in <laughs> hotels only? Because that must be so expensive as well. Because, like, I mean, if you go to events, probably they pay you the hotel, they pay you the flight, and like, I know yeah. how that works. But, like, especially, you know, like, if you're staying in a hotel just a month for training, that's also expensive. Also, an Airbnb in different countries could be expensive depending on where you are. Yeah, I think it really depends where I am. I think most of the times when I travel for work, obviously, as you said, you're organizing it. So I'm like, so this is like my quiet space. But I think when I come to the States, most of the times you find like sub leases. Usually there is like a lot of Israeli people here. Mm -hmm. So there is like, we have like Facebook groups. <laughs> we have okay. Facebook groups of like Israelis in Miami, Israelis in New York, Israelis. In I need to see if, if we have that for Austrians. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like like Israel is very... Israelis are very decent, uh, but uh, if you guys have that, I, think, I love that. We, oh, I don't know if all like that. <laughs> like, are I love very, like, people, but like, I don't know if, if we're like that. <laughs> no, it's a very cultural thing. It's a very cultural thing. Um, but yeah, and then you find like, I don't know, for example, now I'm staying in an apartment of a girl that she's in Israel now. She lives here, but she went to visit Israel. So she has her apartment and then I'm like subleasing. Mm. So it really depends. And also, for example, when I travel South America, if it's not for teaching, if they're not booking it for me, so there is like Airbnbs that are not expensive there. Yeah. You can always, like you always find in every country, it so depends, but you always have to do your research. And I think also at the point where I am, because I travel so much, in most of the countries, I also have friends, I have people. So it's like, if I'm going just for a week, just for a few days, it's like, hi, I'm here. Like, do you have space? Like, people mm. love to host as well. People love to like, yeah like to help you with whatever you need it's like That's you always find a solution you never like i never pay like millions of dollars to stay in like a fancy hotel i don't i mean i think you need to have in mind that you know a lot of people travel and pay their cost at home but you don't pay that cost that you know like you can use the money for for different way of accommodation you know so exactly i think that's why it often seems like the unreachable dream you know because yeah i think it's like a, also a mental thing you just need to be ready to one person once told me, because um, I was asking, you know, how did you manage to travel like for 20 years and change homes like, I don't know, 12 times, you know, and he told me, you know, at one point you just have your little suitcase with all your mental stuff ready and you can leave all the time because you have all the papers, you know how things work, you know, all of that stuff because also like you're working in different countries, you need to get visa, you need to get working permission, you need to get blah, 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 blah. And he told me once you did all of that, and you know how it works, it's not that big of an effort to do it again and again, or you already have that ready. But like, I think the first step is like the, the mental, how can I do that? How am I, you know, getting all the papers together? That's exactly, exactly that. It's like, I feel like there's a big space between wanting it and being like oh that's something i want and trying to plan everything until the last minute and between just jumping to it and being like okay i'm gonna try i'm gonna figure it out and once you're there i feel like it's like riding bicycles it's not like oh my god how am i gonna travel and i have to find a hotel and i have to find it's like for, for me now it's easy it's like i like i'm on the flight i'm finding a place i found a, so it's like it's like on automatic mode i i don't have to yeah. like so I feel like once you're doing it, it gets so easy. But I feel like to get from the point of like, oh, I want to do it. And I don't know how to actually do it. This is like the big, like, yeah, like a yeah. gap. This is like I where, but I do believe that, for example, because because I, I every time I go back home for like long, longer periods of time, I'm like, I wish I had my apartment. And also now I got to a point in life when I'm like, I wish I had my own place. Like I Like I want to have an apartment of my own that I decorated that i 
chose the furniture that I picked that like I want to have like now I'm missing that like I'm like I want to mm-hmm. have that but I think since I really knew that from like from a young age that that's what I want to do or if there is people that are listening or if you like if it's something you want to do you have to be able to also give up that part because obviously traveling and paying rent in your own country and paying for isn't like but if you know that you want to go if you know that you want to take a few years of your life to travel then probably you're gonna have to say like bye bye to those things for a bit which is okay or you know a lot of my friends when they travel like they have their apartments and also they're doing what this girl is doing here they travel for half a year so they're subleasing their apartments like everything is possible it's not like i'm paying back home so it's impossible for me to travel you can always rent your apartment while you're gone you can always find solutions to these type of things you know what i mean exactly. and also you have to be ready to give up you just need to some exactly, of you exactly exactly it's gonna be so interesting because like for me you know i'm in the process of doing that because i have been living alone since i was 18 so i have my own apartment now and now i'm gonna start to travel and to be gone for more months so guys when you're seeing this interview i'm probably currently figuring out how i'm gonna do it <laughs> That's and if you <laughs> and I can if you want to rent her apartment while she's gone yep. let's <laughs> or find <laughs> let's find you some solutions over here exactly. mm. but it's so true because yeah. especially you know I love my apartment here you know so and I love to travel but of course as you said I have everything decorated I have all of my things here and you know of course I can give my things to my parents and put them in their house again you know but still it's like I need to sell the the furniture or I need to you know it's just like you're saddled in some kind of way and you need to take the step to it's just you I have all of your things but at the end of the day I don't think we need as many things as we think we do need you know what I mean right I do know what you mean I have yeah. nothing <laughs> yeah. I just have my clothes That's all I have. What, like what more do you need I just need my dance shoes my clothes and you know just have, like at the end of the day you know when I was thinking about packing for, for my three months I'm like I'm already thinking about it, obviously. So I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna only pack. <laughs> I'm only gonna pack <laughs> clothes that I really wear. And at the end of the day, I don't think I need more. So I started to sort out a lot of clothes now to sell them as well. You know, so I don't know. I think it's like a big, big mental thing, and just like you know, all of the system. If you're settled, to of course give it up. That's that's the point, probably. Probably. I, I think the the system that I that I like the system that I built myself while packing or thinking what to do, like when I go to such long periods of time, is like, I have like the two weeks rule. That's how I call it. The two weeks rule. Okay. If I didn't, if I didn't wear it for the last two, the past two weeks of my life, I don't need it. If I didn't wear it for the, in the last past two, mm-hmm. like two weeks, I probably don't need it. And I'm probably never going to wear it. Cause I think for me, when I pack for like a month or two months mm-hmm. or three months, in my brain, I don't know, since a young age, it was like, it's like packing for two weeks. Because mm-hmm. anyway, you pack, cause you're not going to take um, three months clothes. You're going to take for two weeks and you're going to do laundry and you're going to wash it. You're going to buy some things on the way. And then you're going to wear your new clothes. If you didn't wear it in the last two weeks, you probably really don't need it. Because you're just never going to wear it. You're going to wear the same clothes. You're going to wash them. And it's like, this is my favorite shirt. And I'm going to wear it the next week as well. And I'm going to wear it the next week as well. I'm just going to wash it and wear it. It's like, it's a lie you put it like always when you pack it like oh but what if I would want to wear it I'm like you didn't wear this shirt in the last year of your life don't lie to yourself you're not gonna wear it now when you're gonna travel I think I'm no, lying to myself because <laughs> when I you started think. my clothes up my rule was also okay did you wear it the last year you know and I was like but like a, a year is still longer but you're so right I need to adapt to your two weeks rule <laughs> yeah and also at some point I get to a point like when I pack because now really when I pack it's like an automatic it's like I pack like two hours before my flight I have the clothes that I already know that I'm gonna take maybe I add here here like I use it's like so like now when I pack it's like meditation but it's really it's meditation at this point but it's like I have like I have like this point when I'm like okay wait did I take everything I need and then I'm saying okay if I have my passport my wallet mm-hmm. my heels and a pair of sneakers I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> like, I will be okay. Like, when I travel, worst case, you, like, you always figure it out. Yeah. It's like, as long as I have my passport, money, and my phone, I'll be fine. fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be able, you will be able to manage somehow, as long as you have, as you have these things. 
yeah totally. no we also travel a lot when i was a child with my parents and my parents were always the same i was like you know if i forgot something my parents were like oh chill we're gonna figure it out along the way you know in the worst case we'll buy a new one or whatever and you can sell the old one at home or whatever you know so it was always like pretty chill exactly yeah. <laughs> or it's like but it's so funny parents are so funny because for example it's, I, I feel like I traveled so much and I'm already like an angel and I'm I cannot say that I'm living with my parents but still every time I leave home my dad will be like do you have your passport with you <laughs> do you have this and I'm like and I'm like dad <laughs> I yeah. think I, I I think at this point of my life I would remember to take my passport. So I'm like, but do you have do you have your wallet and your passports with you? What was that? There's a thunderstorm in Austria, I guess. I hope. Um, <laughs> I hope that's what it is. How oh crazy. my god! I was like, oh, hopefully, guys don't hear it, but I guess you heard. It. <laughs> I guess you heard it. It was pretty loud. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, so the weather in Austria is not thirty degrees like in Miami. <laughs> you know, but this is how we are doing live here. This is like this is like we're filming here. This is authentic. This is authentic, guys. Authentic. <laughs> this is authentic. You are getting the real experience. Exactly. <laughs> I actually want to get back to um. Or not get back to, no, let's move on to, to a different side of traveling the world. Because you also told me, you know, you're also alone all the time. So it's not only the positive sides. There's some yeah. downsides or, I don't know if you want to call it like that negatively, but like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, there is, I, I, I get what you're saying. If there is downsides to it, I mean. I am very grateful for what I do. I very, I'm very, very happy. I love traveling. I love what I'm doing. And most of the people look outside and they're like, you're living the dream. And when I ask myself, I'm like, I do live my, like, I do, like, I live the dream. And more than that, I'm living my dream. This is like what I wanted. It's not like, and it's like, it's my dream. And people are like, like, wow, you're living the dream. I wish we could do what you're doing. And it's like, and with how much fun I'm having and all the experience that I'm getting and I feel like at some point it gets, first of all, it gets really exhausting that I don't have a house. Like I don't have a place. I don't have, I live out of my suitcase. I move all the time. Every country that I go to, it's like you meet so many people or you meet friends or you like, you have people that get super close to your heart and then you say goodbye in every country all the time. So it's like you live out of a suitcase and you live out of goodbyes. It's like goodbyes that I don't know when I will see you next. Maybe I will see you in a month or maybe I will see you in two years from now. I don't know. So it's like, I think this is like, like a very sad part. And I'm so bad with goodbyes. I'm so, goodbyes make me so sad. And I have to say goodbyes all the time. And it's so heavy on my heart to say bye every time I leave. And I think also when you go to a new country by yourself, without like having your people it's like you're always out of your comfort zone and you ho always have to like find yourself in are you every an extroverted country, person have... sorry to interrupt you are you extroverted would you say that about yourself yeah okay. yeah i think so but also i would say that i wasn't at all mm -hmm. and i still so. have these sides of me when i'm like but i wasn't and i feel like it really brought out this side of me because they were like you have no choice <laughs> Mm. it's like you have it's like you have literally yeah. no choice it's, it's either you're gonna stay in your little bubble and i talk to anyone and say and then it's like you're not gonna get anywhere like that or it was like i went to a new country i don't know anyone i would have to go in the room and be like hi everyone hi. am i uh, like <laughs> you know. let's be friends. like let's be friends you know what i mean mm. but i still do have these moments especially um especially when i'm like i don't know around people that i like admire a lot or like I feel like this more than like it's like I get like very I don't know how to say this word in English but I get very like I don't know if stress is the word and then suddenly this side comes out of me that I'm like that I'm afraid to talk I'm like I just want to go home and be in my bed I cannot be here I'm like mm -hmm. it still comes out but in the beginning I was really a person that I would be like I don't like people I don't like to talk I don't want people to get close to me I'm like I'm very in my bubble like very want to be in my house I don't want to go out I don't but I think traveling just opened it because I had like, hmm. I had to, like I had to, literally. <laughs> you know what's a random story out of my life, guys? That's going to be so random now. But like, you know what I recognize for me? Because I was, I was a child that was pretty introverted. I, I was a child that always cried when she had to leave her mom. 
Okay, I was that kind of child. Same, <laughs> same. I I would not sleep. You know the crazy part? I would not sleep outside of my house until I was like 12, I think. I would not sleep outside of my house. I would call my parents crying. And look at me now. <laughs> yeah. I would not leave same. my house. <laughs> No, like my grandma, she, um, God bless her, she passed, the, uh, she passed away, unfortunately. But like last year, when I went to Peru, she was like, I can't believe you're going alone to Latin America. You were the child crying. You didn't spend the night over at my place till you turned, I don't know what age. And now you're fucking leaving the country and going to a different continent. Like, I'm so proud of you. You know, that was like, that was the cutest thing ever to, to hear from her. But like, I was that person as well. And um The thing is, what I also recognize, um, because it's a cultural thing, um, me having learned Spanish, because yesterday I catched myself, because normally in Austria, you don't talk to people. If you're on the train, you don't talk to people, okay? It's not like a, you don't do that, okay? It's like, I think like New York is like also like that. I don't know. It's just like, you know, everybody gives yeah. each other the space and then, you know, it's fine. And I, I heard some people talking Spanish yesterday, complaining about the door closing so brutally in Austria and I just tried to and then try uh, immediately tried to explain them in Spanish like oh yeah no that's normal don't worry and they're like oh you talk Spanish I'm like oh yeah I talk Spanish and then I start a full conversation I'm like I'm so extroverted in Spanish but I'm not that extroverted in German <laughs> I don't know yeah I think this comes from even a deeper side of being extroverted or not because I think that this is like a cultural thing like mm. It's like, I think for that, for example, Israeli people are very similar to like Spanish. Like, it's like, I think it's not even a culture. It's like, for example, when I travel the world and then I found another Israeli person, if I know him or I don't know him, like we will hear each other speak Hebrew and we will be like, hey. Hebrew, hi, hi, like, how are you? Da, da, da. Especially yeah. when I travel alone, this started become, becoming such a, an important thing for me. Like if I hear like Hebrew and I'm alone, It's like, hi, like, oh my God, like, I'm also here. And he's there oh, alone as well. Like, and then it's like, you always find ways to connect. So I think the same happens, for example, when you're like, because back home, for example, obviously, like, it's not like that. But when you travel, when you're out of your country, it's like, when you hear someone speaks your language, it's very like, mm -hmm. oh my God. Okay. So I think with, like, with Spanish, at this point of my life, also when I hear people speak Spanish, I'm like, where are you from? <laughs> yeah where are you from me my friend me my friend you know what i mean but it's me too. yeah but, so but for cute. sure it's like oh, yeah. they start to talk to you having a full conversation I'm like oh you're so cute <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my friends always tell me my friends that maybe i don't know travel less than i because my friends like for example in peru like they always see me traveling a lot and they're like we don't even understand where you are in the world right now you're just every like you're just somewhere it's like you're just somewhere we don't even know where But they're always surprised that like you you make friends so fast. I remember I had like with my friend a conversation the other day because I'm here in Miami and I'm here alone. Now I'm getting now obviously now I got to know people la la la. But it's like I came here alone. And it's like I met like this like girl from Peru and the next day we went to the beach together. You know what I mean? And it's like they were like you make friends so fast. I'm like it's training at this point. But it's like she's it's here alone. I'm here friends. alone. <laughs> yeah she's here alone i'm here alone we made each other we're like hi what are you doing like we make plans we got because it's like it's like it's an instinct at this point i think mm -hmm. and it's like and then it then it opened up for me to like okay yeah. like i'm here alone let's find friends let's talk to people let's find my my place we were my people but i feel like also when we talk about culture wise i think also you, like in europe or in different countries it's very different like for example Also in Spanish, I think when you leave the elevator, I have to say something. I cannot just leave the elevator. That's rude. Like you always say, like, Hasta luego, or something. You're like always like yeah. something. When in Europe, you're like, I'm going out of the elevator. I don't know this person. Why would I say bye to Which this is, person? I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know I you. Know. You're just in the elevator with him. You're just going out. Yeah. So I think it's like, yeah, it's like, it's just really different. It's yeah. really also different. The, the way you greet each other. You know, when I came to Peru and they... Sorry to give me kisses on the on the. On the They're kissing you. <laughs> that was the cutest thing ever. But like the first time, I was like, "Oh, that's not like." Till I realized, like everybody does it with each other. I was like, "Oh, okay." But you know, like of course we hug each other here. But if you don't know each other at all, you, in the dance scene we hug each other. It doesn't matter what. But like normal Austrian culture, you don't just go and hug. You're like. <laughs> 
stuff like that. No, it, so, it was, yeah. it, it was <laughs> shocking to me. It was such a cultural shock. I remember my first time in South America, I was shocked. I was like, why is everyone kissing me? <laughs> <laughs> and not even necessarily in a bad way. In general, I'm a person that usually I, I don't, I don't touch my friends know that like I don't like physical touch and me we don't go together we're, we're not like my friends like I don't hug them and so for me it was like oh my god it was so overwhelming oh for example I used to teach classes there and I would finish class and people would like stand in line obviously like that is amazing like they say thank you after class but they don't say th they hug you they kiss you and you're like whoa or when you go to like you're in a friend's house and there's like 20 people you're not just gonna enter the room and be like hi everyone you're gonna go one by one and say hi to each person and kiss each one of them. I in it, we don't do that back home. We don't do that. No, I we don't. I was so shocked. And what also shocked me because that was a big difference for me too. Like the classes I visited, or like I don't know if it's everywhere like that, but like we were warming up and the teacher goes through the room and says hello to everybody. You know, in Austria, it's just like the teacher is there, starts a class, and. The teacher starts the class it's not the person's not going through saying hello to everybody it's just like if you take the class you take the class and you want other 35 people and i was like yeah oh well that's so i think thing. so i think that does happen in different countries as well like for example here in miami i feel like that's a person dependent because for you, example in israel in israel we don't do that either i mean i do say hi i'm like hi like like i say hi especially to the students that i really know or like i say hi like when class starts obviously but I feel like, for example, here in Miami, there is a few teachers that will go one by one to each person in the room before class starts, and they, they will say hi to everyone, even if they don't know them. It's like, I feel like it's like in every, that's just so interesting. This is why I love to travel, because I think in every country, things are so different, like, mm. so different. Small things that for me are so normal over there, like, or things that for them, it's like a day to day, like, this is like how it's supposed to be for me. I'm like, like the kisses thing, I'm like, I'm sh I was shocked, I remember in the beginning, I was like, they're all kissing me, everyone. <laughs> so it's just so interesting to me. This is, I think, one of the biggest reasons I love to travel, because I'm always like, wait, so this is how you guys do it over here? How crazy. Yeah. But I think also, you know, to come to learn, to understand that mm -hmm. cultures function differently, the way of communication, whatever and everything, you know, I think you really need to be open and to have like an open mind and a lot of love and, you know, the curiosity to broaden your horizon because things work differently in different countries you know so some things you might consider as a root in your country are normal in other places you know because i don't know simple simple stuff in austria we're really punctual we're fucking fucking punctual you know if you leave us waiting for five minutes you're late <laughs> for example you know wow and my spanish teacher i talk with you my see <laughs> how interesting i i talk with my spanish teacher about the, you know like austrian punctuality is like five minutes early that's how we do it and classes start on point you know and my spanish teacher also told me you know like yeah no depending on which student he has he comes that amount of minutes late with me he comes only two minutes late because he knows <laughs> so, <laughs> you know that's small stuff how crazy mm -hmm. No, these things are like, but I feel like this is why this is like the part that I love the most. Like, I'm so like happy to learn because how boring would life be if in every country everything would have been the same? How boring would that be if everyone would have been like, oh, it's so interesting to travel to a new place that you've never been before and be like, okay, how so tell me, how do you guys do it here? Yeah. Remember, my biggest difference was from like going, I don't know, South America or like. South America to Europe and then Europe to Asia. Like mm -hmm. everything is like, you're like, it's different worlds and they're all so interesting. Mm -hmm. They're also so interesting. I love that. I love that so much. Can we talk a little bit about staying safe, traveling alone, you know, because staying safe in, in, what, in what aspect of it? I think in all of the aspects, whatever you want to In all of the aspects. I think, you know, like a lot of, especially as a woman traveling alone, mm -hmm. especially also Latin America or like countries where you have not the Europeans, you know, like not the, the system of security we have, for example. I don't know what is 
stuff you had to learn or like how do you make yourself feel most safe traveling alone um i think it's always being aware of the country you're traveling to first like there's countries that you know you have to be like alert all the time there's countries you know that you're good like you're in the safest hands right now like and i feel like for me personally coming from a country that is a bit complicated <laughs> Mm-hmm. Coming from a country that is a bit complicated, I think I was grown. I have a like. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, can I also can I can I also do that? Why did it happen? <laughs> I saw it, and you know, if you, I think there's a heart as well. <laughs> I once managed to, to make them. Yeah. <laughs> How cute technology! Guys, go watch the YouTube video if you're hearing this on Spotify or somewhere that you get what we're doing. <laughs> we're, having, we're having special effects over here. Join us on YouTube. It only works with you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like since I came from a country that was like, it is, was and is very like complicated, like security was, it is very, it's like safe, but very not safe. We grown like we grew in a way that I was like I I grew in a way that I was always very alert. Not not because I'm a woman, but in general, <laughs> but in general. So I grew always like alert, always watching every like making sure that I'm safe, making sure like always. So I think when I traveled the world, it wasn't that far from like what I knew. It was like okay, now I'm in a country that I don't know. Now I really need to be alert, and I think. Um, the best way to keep yourself safe is really like getting to know people as fast as you can being really aware to where what where you are in the world and also finding your people very fast for example when i was in south america i like i i have my friends over there that are like that they know because you you just need to know because i feel like every country has like has her like safe and unsafe some more some less like some are like very like unsafe some are. but it's like you need to know how to like walk in those countries you need to know where because there is areas that are super safe there's areas that are like extremely dangerous but you need to be aware so i think always make always watching your surroundings seeing where you are seeing like okay wait i don't this is not the view i'm not like i'm not i'm not i don't look like a part of the view so it's like this is where you need maybe to stay away and also finding people to guide you it's like it's impossible i think to travel completely by yourself and just guessing it's just very unsafe so i think having people to like at least let you know like just don't get like just don't be in that area like Mm. this is safe this is cool you should do that you should do that you should do that but like for example to these areas just stay away you always need to have that you always have to like ask for people ask recommendations ask where you should or not you just really need to do your like research in that aspect i really think it's important especially when you're a woman especially when you travel by yourself you don't want to just go and be like i'm gonna go everywhere and walk like nothing mm. because there is a lot of places there that are like unsafe yeah. and, and some countries are like some countries are like unsafe and some countries are like extremely unsafe so you really need to know where you're traveling to. i thought you're gonna say some are mm. unsafe and some are safe you're like oh, some are extremely <laughs> unsafe extremely unsafe no there's obviously countries that are very for example i think my experience like for example, when I was in Thailand or when I was in Korea, in Korea, for example, like I've never felt so safe in my life. Mm, it's I've never it yeah. felt really, really safe. Also, because the people safe. were really inviting, welcoming, and talking to me a lot. Because it's yeah, it's like cold, like it's like something about these countries are extremely, extremely safe. You also like their criminal rate, like they're like mm. it's very low. Like I wouldn't mind even like leaving, like leaving my phone like this in a restaurant and leave you would know that it will be there when you come back you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. like i felt very very safe mm-hmm. um but then there is obviously countries that you know that are unsafe so you just really need to like understand where you're traveling to watch your surroundings ask people ask people do you trust people ask equally people. um i in the beginning i really did <laughs> in the beginning oh. of traveling i really did in the oh, beginning no. of traveling, I really did. Yeah, I think in the beginning of the way, because I think I would, I would assume that everyone come with the same intentions as mine. And also I would be like, because I didn't understand the differences of how people see the world and how people see life. I would think that everyone has the same point of view of mine. Like I'm like, I come from me, like where I come from, where, how I see friendships, how I, how I see, like, 
I thought people were like the same. So I think I, I did get a few burns on the way, like that I'm like, oh, wait, okay. So I did get a few burns on the way. So now it's like, it takes more time for me to trust people and get them close to me, especially when I travel so much. Mm. But yeah, mm. but yeah, it was a process. It was a process <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Because me too, I trust really easily. Still, let's see. <laughs> we talked, I told you. No, you need to like, it's important. I think it's very important, especially when you travel. You do need to open up fast. You do need to let people exactly eat because pretty of fast. That, you know, having the balance yeah. of opening up, but like still, yeah. But yeah, so I think that that is something also. It's like training. It's like training of how to make friends. It's training who to actually make your friends, who to actually Because I have a lot of people that I know. I have a lot of people that are like, I know them, we are friends, but th my real friends, I can count on like maybe one hand, if I'm being extra too. But it's like my real friends. But there's a lot of people that I know and we are close and we're going to be okay. It's not that I'm like, we don't have any hate. We don't have any dramas because we just, mm -hmm. I just know that this is people that I'm not going to let them close, close to me. They're close until a certain level. So I think once you like travel a lot and you get those burns at some point because you have to, it's like you start learning, okay, who who are my people? What is the people that I want to like bring close to me? What are the people that I need to like keep away? It's like, it's a process of learning, but it is important to like open up fast, but just know that mm -hmm. not everyone are going to have the same intentions as you are. Not everyone are going to be as nice as you are. Not everyone are going to. But I do believe that if you're you are a good person and you are staying with the like, if you are coming from a good place and you always have pure intentions with other people, even if they don't have, in the end it's gonna backfire at them. Like, I never experienced like when someone like hurt me that I would like. I always came out of it. I always came out of it better. I always like kept going. I always kept on loving the people around me. I always kept giving like energy, like good energy to me. So I feel like it's like and those people are the ones that got their life like you know a little bit fucked so it's like mm -hmm. so it's important to keep yourself very to to to, to stay, stay like i don't know how to, yeah. to stay focused and stay balanced and stay good even no matter where you're going home or like no matter where you're getting to no matter how much you evolve and no matter how is your career it's like staying a good person staying nice staying humble staying like yeah as long as you stay that no matter what negative energy or people will come to your life, they, in the end, the universe is just gonna like kick them out at some point and you're gonna stay with like the people that needs to be there. Yeah, I agree 100% because I also think like at the end of the day, what, or what helps me a lot is, you know, I stay focused on myself for what I want, where I want to go, you know, I give a lot of love, but if something happens, you know, I I'm still can love you, but I love you from far away and it's your Thing how you deal with it you know and one person once told me as well just trust the process that this person you know because there's moments where i'm like you know you get protective for your friends or you get protective or you want to do something about it sometimes you know but at the end of the day you know just having the trust you know the universe will have its reason and you just stay with you and your life you know to leave other people around just do their thing yeah. you know Live and let yeah. live. I don't know if you can translate it to that like that in English, yeah. but like in German it makes sense. But but, but I do, yeah, because we also have that in, in, in Hebrew. We also yeah. have that. I don't know how to say that in English, but yeah, yeah we do have the yeah. same phrase. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the end of the day, it's like, yeah, when you travel, you find your people. You find your people and you also find out who are not your people on the way. Like you will have no choice but to like. So, yeah. I do trust people still. That's the thing. I feel like it sounded pretty sad when I said it before. I still do trust people. I'm just more careful mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. like, when I when I let them in, in when I let them super close to me, I am I'm, I'm more careful at this point. I'm like, you can be close to me. We can be okay. But if you're coming close, close, I'm just much more careful mm -hmm. at this point, I think. Yeah. So it's not only about staying safe, you know, in the country, but, like, staying safe, caring about your mental yeah. health my mental state traveling alone like because i feel like your instinct is you just want to be surrounded by people when you're alone you're like i just need to have people i need to have people i need to have friends but it's like sometimes it's better being alone <laughs> sometimes it's better being alone you know what i mean 
And it gets pretty weird when I travel to teach. I think also a part of me is like, do you actually want to be close to me because you like me and you think I'm a good person? Or a part of it is because I am Maya or because I dance a certain way or because I'm here to teach and I'm like the teacher. Are we like, are you actually like, you want to be my friend because of me? You want to come or it's like, or is it only because I don't know, I dance good. You know what I mean? It's like, I think that's hard because, um, generally you know with all the everybody tells you oh you need to network you need to start networking when you're like already you know starting out with your dance career and everything and i think the way of doing it staying pure and authentic and not because i think like out of my experience i can tell if someone and that's a thing where i'm really i trust people but i'm really really attentive with it as well um because i know there's people being pretty nice to me but i don't but i know they're not nice to everybody that's where i'm like getting really cautious of okay you know like if you because i'm i'm of the con how do you say i'm convinced or my approach is you know i give a lot of love but i want to give it to everybody in the same amount mm -hmm. possible you know i don't give you love because i expect something i never give love because i expect something i give love because i want to and i think it's feelable if somebody gives you love and expects something back and that's when it starts to not feel good for me personally that's me okay mm -hmm. so my approach is always, you know, if you want to give love, give it because you want to give it for the sake of giving love, not because you are opportunistic. Because I think that's where it starts to get feelable. And I think, you know, keeping it balanced between promoting yourself, getting to know people, feeling safe in the country, you know, but at the same time being like, okay, down to earth. That's like the balance where you need to find a way. Yeah, I feel like our industry is a bit complicated in that aspect of life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit complicated in that aspect of like making friendships, of staying loyal, of staying humble. It's very, it can get very tricky. It can get very tricky and it can get very confusing at some point. Mm. But like, I feel like when you said it now, remind me like, I feel like one of my biggest fears is for people to be like, oh my gosh, like, like my, like that I'm only nice to certain people. For people to be like, to, for people to experience me as a, not as a nice person. For people to be like, Mm -hmm. I met Maya and she was like she didn't know who I am so she was so not nice to me like this is one of I think my biggest fear I'm like I don't want anyone to have this type of experience when they're thinking like no but she's like she's not nice she thinks she's like the shit or she's like she's like she's so like full of herself like this is like one of my biggest fears I swear so it's like for me it's like no matter who you are like I'm gonna be nice to you no matter what like we're gonna be good I'm not like I feel like some people can get really Ugh. yeah <laughs> like, you like, know what I mean I 100% that's also one of my fears to, to admit to be honest because especially you know sometimes if I go simple things like if I go to the studio and I don't feel good but I want to go train and, I already be, and I'm already like, oh no, I like, I don't feel like going to hug everybody today. I don't feel like, you know, socializing. I don't have the same energy, but I'm like, I have the fear of, oh my God, people going to think I hate them now because I didn't hug them today, but I'm just, I just wanted to go train, you know? And most of the people, they're totally okay. Cause you know, they know I give a lot of love each day. And sometimes you, you can't be happy and loving and being in your full energy every day. Cause that's not how, how life works. But as well to keep in mind, you know, if somebody wants to find a reason to talk bad about you, they're going to find a reason anyway, you know? And yo, so no matter if you're nice, they're going <laughs> to, like, I don't know, your earrings, your hair, whatever, they're going to find a reason to talk bad about you in one way ever. Like, you know, if people want to find something, they find something. So, yo, they find something. They always do. It's crazy, actually. It's like when people want to talk shit about you, people are going to find yeah. reasons to talk shit about you. They're going to make reasons to talk shit about you. Well, yeah. People. Yeah. <laughs> so I totally get that, but yeah, you can't stop them, you know? So you can just protect your energy. No, just yeah. let no, also just let them talk. They're just going to yeah. be giving you more exposure. You know what I mean? <laughs> Promote. Because <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> A lot, a lot of people, when they see my Instagram or they see me like, I don't know, out of my comfort zone, when they see me like, a lot of people, it's very easy to think that I'm like, that I'm not going to be a nice person or that I'm a bitch or that I'm the, it's like, people think that. I know that a lot of people see me and that's the first thing that they think. 
but this is why I always make sure that I'm extremely nice there. This is why I always make sure that I'm like very open. But it's like, in the end of the day, if people are going to talk bad about me, whoever they're talking bad about me to are going to meet me at some point of life. And they're going to see me and they're going to be like, huh? Oh, wait. <laughs> and they're going to be like, huh? Yeah. And then I did, my, I, I did my job. I'm like, I'm a good person. I don't need to prove it. I'm just going to be me. At some point, you're going to understand it. And this person is going to, that's the point you have you don't need to prove anybody you know so first of all it doesn't have any sense because if someone doesn't want to see you as a good person you can't convince them you can't so no. you don't need to and i think that's a beautiful thing about it. you don't need to do anything besides being yourself you know because you don't i think that's a pretty pretty really down really you know down to earth thing to say to just be like i don't need to prove anybody Because that makes you seem really in your balance, you know, to be like that you really, and how do you say to yeah. feel comfortable with yourself and to be confident in the person you are? Because you don't need to prove anything. Exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna be me. Yeah. People are gonna like it or not. So this is that I think keeping yourself safe. If we're going back to the topic that all of this conversation <laughs> started, to, <laughs> we lost it, huh? But yeah. if going back to that, to like where like feeling safe, I think that that this is this is what it is like except of like literally security wise or like being a woman traveling alone like mentally or like traveling by yourself when you don't have your you're not in your comfort zone you're not in your support system you're not in your like country you're not people don't speak the same language is being able to stay true to yourself which is I think was the hardest thing for me to find because I would usually adapt myself to the place I'm in I would be like if this is how they are this is how I'm, but I feel like at this point now I'm like this is who I am this is what I like, this is what I don't like, this is how I talk, this is how I express myself, if you like it or you don't like it, and then going, like, being able to stay in that, like, balance of, like, being, pre like, present yourself as who you are, and stay with it, and stand with who you are, this is, I think, the hardest thing, but I feel like this is, like, once you get that, this is how you keep yourself safe when you travel, or in general, in the dance industry, I feel like being true to who you are, in general, is, like, the most important thing, to not lose yourself, to not let, like, the hype or the people around you to feel like oh yeah. but I need to be this and to be cool I need to do that and that and that I need to be with these people it's like no this is who I am I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and yes. like this is my lane so yes. this is I think the hardest thing in the day or traveling all of that mm -hmm. I 100% agree <laughs> <Hey. laughs> <laughs> okay I think we're gonna round it up Oh my God. A little yeah, bit, okay. I think. <laughs> Let yeah, me yeah, check yeah, my, my... I hope the rain is not too low because guys, I would love to show you, but it's like, okay, no, you, you can't see, but I tell you, it's like floods of water coming down currently. That is so crazy. I mean, I don't, I, I don't really hear. I did hear like okay. a few thunders in the okay. beginning, but I don't hear the rain. So I think they're going to be fine. Amazing, amazing. If not, guys, I, I, take it. Take it as a meditation. Take it as a we we are in we are in a special effects podcast. You have some rain sounds. You have hearts. You have likes all around. Yeah. You have you have it all. You have it you all. Have it all. There you go. You have it all. No, like I think we we talked about most of the topics we wanted to talk about. I think we still got into a different kind of direction, but I love how this thing turned out. To be honest, so is there. Before I ask you the last question, is there anything, any topic you still want to approach in any way? Or something, no, no let's make it just, three, what do you have to give away at the end of this episode? What do you want to tell people? Um, what do I have to tell people? Um, especially for my people that want to travel, I guess I would say, or feel like they want to do what I'm doing or want, they see people doing that and they want to go, like that's what, that's their goal, is to... To, to step away from that, how am I going to do it or trying to figure it out or like trying to like, to just jump. I think especially with this type of thing, it's just doing it. Like you would forever be stressed. You will always be like, but I don't know it, but you will never know everything. You will never be ready completely. You will never have all of your shit together. So sometimes you just need to jump and do it. Like get that flight ticket, get on that plane, get And figure it out from there because you are going to figure it out and then you're going to laugh at yourself, you know? I think that's what I usually tell my friends as well. It's like, they're like, 
but I don't know. Like, I don't know if to travel. I don't know if to buy. I'm like, just buy it. Just travel. You're going to get there and you're going to be laughing at yourself. Like, I cannot believe I didn't do it until now. Because we always figure it out. So just make that step. Go for it. It's not as scary as it looks. It's not as complicated as it looks. That's the thing. It's not as complicated as it looks. It's pretty, it's pretty simple once you get it. Once you get the hang of it. But to get the hang of it, you just need to go. So, so go get out go. of your bubble <laughs> it's like just do it like just do it that would be my advice that would be my biggest thing for the people that want to travel i think okay so my last question the people who know already know as always um what is the most random emoji you use the most random emoji <laughs> a random one i want to have a random one Wow, how would I know that? I cannot exit and go to my WhatsApp. The most <laughs> random emoji. Oh, true, because you're on your phone. Oh, I'm so sorry, babe. Um. <laughs> no, I'm going to figure it out. I'm trying to think what emojis do I use? I don't really use emojis. But I have like, no, but that's not random because I'm from Israel. I have like the Star of David that I always use. The cats. I always use the cats. My yes. my go-to emojis, the cats. Like, you know, these cats that have, like, the smiling, the heart. But mm -hmm. I don't think that's right. But this is my go-to emoji. Okay. Or whatever. These cats are just my, these are my emojis. Okay, forever. guys, we take the cats. So if you've listened to the end of this episode, <laughs> what you have done, otherwise you wouldn't hear this right now, you go to our cover post, to any post, any content we have with Maya or the YouTube comments and comment this emoji we want to see you guys if you've listened to the whole episode and yeah send some love thank you. I would say <laughs> thank you so much Maya of course your Instagram is already linked down below the whole episode is there anything else you want to advertise for nah my Instagram I think is is is, is good enough amazing yeah. Okay, guys, so yeah, make sure to use our code podcast10 to get 10% off of Sister Dancewear. Make sure to go hit the subscribe button to go follow us on Instagram. And yeah, thank you so much, Maya, for. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, go follow. <laughs> right now. <laughs> go follow. Yeah. Support thank people. So <laughs> We're at entrepreneurs. Support the people. God damn it. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. thank you thank so much you. guys as you have already recognized it's going to be more than one episode each two weeks this summer so um yeah see you next week guys bye, okay, bye. 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 Thank you.